Hello everybody, Cloud 9 here, and this is a video I'm doing as a bit of a product review and a bit of a how-to on Mr. Hobby, Mr. Masking Sol Neo. This is a, as the name suggests, a liquid masking agent, and I've used several over the years. This is my favorite, and I think possibly the best. So, before I get into the bit of the tutorial here and showing you the demonstration on how to use it, I'm just going to go over some of the other masking agent products that I've used over the years. And this is one of the first ones that I bought. This is liquid masking film. Uh, it's a big, big bottle. I've hardly used it that much, actually. It dries. I don't actually know if they make this anymore, then I think about it. It dries kind of strangely. It stays very sticky for a while. It takes longer to dry, but it's, it is nice to use um, so and so on the tack adhesion that it has but not too bad and again I don't know if you can actually get this anymore so that's one that I, I used to use on occasion uh, another one that I use and I still use to the day is micro mask this is just this nice blue stuff and what's really nice about this is even after it dries um, all you have to do is get it wet and it'll basically wash off so it dries pretty hard though. It dries very, very brittle. Um, that's It kind of tends to lift up on the edges. So some people like to use this stuff for masking windows, uh, the canopy frames. It's a bit hit and miss with there. I think it might have to do with the moisture uh, or humidity levels of where I live. So that might be something. Um, the second last one that I used quite a bit is Humbrol Mascol. This stuff does and doesn't work. I've had mixed results with this. Uh, I have positive and negative things to say about this. Negative is that it stinks. It, it, it has a horrible, horrible odor. It smells like burnt rubber. Uh, it does dry. It dries quite nice. Uh, I was told that it was water soluble so I could use any kind of brush and then just wash it off. You cannot. It will not work at all. It's ruined two brushes that were my favorite brushes, by the way. Thank you, Humbrol. And uh, yeah, I was quite, yeah, quite upset about this. And you can see this thing is completely empty. Why? Because the cap didn't tighten properly, even when I put it on there like this, and the entire thing dried out. Um, it does work. I have had it actually lift paint before, which is really irritating. So I don't use this anymore and I didn't bother to buy uh, a new bottle. I should also mention really quickly, this is water soluble. So you can use your brush and then just wash it off. It comes out really, really easy, incredibly well. This is, this is actually very, very nice stuff depending on what you're using it for. However, the nicest stuff that I've ever come across is this Mr. Hobby Masking Sol Neo. Now, this is the Neo bottle. There's also a Mr. Hobby Masking Sol, and I've been told the difference between the two is that this dries kind of higher and a bit more thick and kind of chunky, if you know what I mean. And the reason why that's important here is with this masking, with this uh, micro mask, it dries flat. And there have been times where I've used this painted it with an airbrush and then I can't see where any of this stuff is because it's just it's so flat. This stuff dries quite a bit higher so you can still find it, you can paint around it, and you can still find it to remove it. And that's incredibly nice for what we're going to be doing here. Uh, what's also really cool, it comes with a brush in here. It's this nice green color. Uh, what I like to do is to just take a little bit of it here and just dab it on in there and it dries pretty quickly too I might add so you kind of want to do this in, in smaller in smaller batches but I can use a regular brush it is not technically water soluble it if you mix it with water what it kind of does is it like it kind of stiffens it up and I can just peel it off of the brush afterwards it's quite nice you can also use a sponge for whatever you're going to be doing this it, that works quite well with this as well, but what I like is I have a brush. I've got some of it here This is display base for a Gamala warship from uh, Yamato 2199 and uh, I want to create uh, Chipped patterns on here, and then I'm going to paint the entire thing in the traditional uh, Gamala style colors And so again, what's really nice is I can use my regular old paintbrush here and I can just paint this stuff on, make a little 
chipped effects, kind of scratches. And you can see basically as it sets down there, that's basically how it's gonna dry. It's not gonna shrink. It's not gonna do anything kind of weird to mess you up. And so this is stuck on here. Look at that, as you can see it's kind of gloopy. You just take some tissue paper. Look at that, came right off. Everything on here is gone. It's completely clean. Could not do that with the mask all at all. That's how much I love this stuff. Now I can just keep going right back and working here and get all these little scratches done. So what I'm gonna be doing here is just slowly biding my time. Now how long do you have to wait for this stuff to dry? Uh, you should wait a decent amount of time. It doesn't take forever for this stuff to dry. It's not like you're gonna be waiting overnight type of thing. It does dry pretty quickly. Um, usually when I work at this stuff, and I'm painting it on and or whatever it is I'm doing with it. I usually leave it alone to dry for about an hour. Um, maybe I'll apply a second layer of it, just depending on what the project might be. But basically you're gonna be okay. So here we are, just gonna keep going at this. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and keep stippling all this on here and come back with it painted. I'm gonna show you some other stuff that I use this for and uh, go on from there. So one of the other things that's nice about the uh, masking salt that I like to use it for is where I live it can get occasionally dry and when that happens, especially in the winter time, it can cause tape to lift up when you don't want it to, especially on edges. So what's really nice to do is just use the built-in brush and just brush this along all the tape edges and this will help everything stay nice and tight and neat and you just need to apply a fairly thin layer and if you go against the tape it gets caught in all the corners and helps it to adhere better so yeah I like to do I like to do this even with some regular regular modeling whatever it is I might be doing just to make sure nothing bleeds through because there's nothing Quite worse than working on a project for a while and having little bits of wrong color paint seeping through. So it's quite easy to do this. Again, you just brush it along the edges there in a nice, nice layer. And what I'm also going to be doing is painting some more of this onto the white areas here so I get two very varied tones in the chipping effect that I'm going for. And so this will work out quite nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this. I'm going to paint the center section red with uh, Tamiya flat red. This is Tamiya flat white that I painted on here over basically what is a silver metallic gray color from Tamiya also. And uh, next step is to remove all the little chipping specks that we've made and see the final result. All right, everything has been painted and I've removed the masks. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to remove this masking solution here. So all you're gonna have to do is basically, it's, I can see it's still all raised up pretty well. 
and removing the tape I can see some of where it used to be and basically all you got to do is just kind of rub it off and it comes off quite quite easily let me zoom in a bit here show you what I'm talking about so you can just see there it's coming off quite quite easily just by rubbing it back and forth like that one of the things you can do is you can use an eraser and you can just go over it like that simply with a eraser make sure it's a soft eraser you don't want to have an old eraser it'll rub off some of the paint but um yeah it just takes a little bit and you just go over it like that and look at that it's got good enough tack that it's going to stick onto the model and stick onto the surface of whatever it is but it's not going to have too much extra in there that it's going to be a huge bother for you it's going to end up removing too much of your paint or whatever it is you've done on there so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just finish working on all this get it all off and uh, show you the end results all right and here's the finished display base with all the scratches and everything on there and I have to say I'm actually really impressed with how this has turned out. I probably could have gone a lot less on doing the scratches on the white. I uh, wanted to do kind of two-tone chipping on there. It was really easy to remove this stuff though with just some pointed tweezers here. I could just agitate it. The easiest one to do, however, was just a toothpick because it's, uh, it's a pretty soft medium to just kind of move it around. Again, agitate it up a little bit. You kind of lift it up. If I needed to, I could easily just pull it out with the pointed tweezers. And then what was super easy to do is just going over it with an eraser like this. You just go back and forth. You're not pushing hard. You're just basically causing a bit of friction and lifting it up. And what was also really nice is I painted the uh, some of the silver on here and then painted the white on top of it and then painted the red. So it's two layers of paint on some of these things. So they were slightly some of them were slightly buried in here but what was really nice about it is it was still raised up enough because of the uh, nature of the neo of it being slightly higher than drying flat i could just find it and just again agitate it really quickly and then just brush it off it's really simple it's really effective it adds quite a bit of uh, a unique charm to the to the whole weathering process i think this stand looks pretty good um, it's just meant to be a simple added effect to the ship that's going to be going on top of it. Just to add a bit of character to the base, not to um, over exemplify the, uh, the, the model that I want to have. I want to have it just something nice and interesting when you look at it. It's beat up, it's a bit damaged. And that's exactly what I got out of this. So yes, this Masking Soul Neo is my new favorite. Uh, masking solution. I absolutely love this stuff. This is, this is the best stuff you can get. You can use it for so many things. Gundams, armor, cars, aircraft, bases, ships. It has a whole whole line of, of uses. There's a couple other things that I use this stuff for and that is I also use it to pre-glue parts down. I'm going to show you really quick here. This is bumped off but on the nose here you can see I've used this masking salt neo and I just put it as glue and I temporarily glue pieces in here so these pieces are temporarily glued in and I can go ahead and paint the rest of the model and do whatever I need to do and then when I am done I can just pull it off I can go ahead and finish working on these parts cleaning them prepping them whatever it may be so it's really great for temporarily gluing pieces into place when you need it because it's not going to ruin the model it's just going to stick together and you can go ahead and continue working on what you're doing it works really 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 well for that and some of you might be asking why didn't i fill it in here and mask off the the red or mask off the white sections here when i painted the red why did i use tape well these masking solutions as great as they are they do have a bit of a hard time staying in a straight line part of that is your hand um, I know there's a lot of people out there that they use this stuff for like clear parts like this where you have really nice canopy frames and they'll just paint it into the frame there. I've never been able to get that to work really well. Some modelers have. I prefer to use tape and I prefer to use it for stuff like this and for, you know, temporarily gluing in parts 
So that's kind of just been my experience. I haven't been able to get that to work as well as other modelers have. So this is it guys. I would highly suggest you check this stuff out. It's the nicest stuff out there. It's like I said, it's not entirely water soluble. It does a weird thing where it gums up the brush and then you can just pull it off with the bristles and away you go. And it doesn't, it hasn't ruined any of my brushes so far, like the mask all has. I just continue to use this stuff. It's it's just such nice stuff to use. It's again the best that I've ever come across and I saw all the other ones that I've tried in the past. I love that it dries raised so you can find where it is and I'm just absolutely impressed and loving the end result here. So thank you so much for watching guys. This is Roblox Cloud 9. If you have any questions about this product, leave them down in the description below and I'll do my best to answer them. But if you're also in your hobby shop, give this stuff a go. You're going to love it. It's going to be one of the best tools you have on your bench. Thanks so much for watching guys. Take care.